Ready? Oh. <laughs> yes. I race you to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Tucson, Arizona, cowboy country. Not to meet an all-American athlete, but Canadian cross-country superstar, Emily Batty. This is often the place you come to winter training and it's paying off. Finishing third overall, the 2018 World Cup season was a magnificent one. At 30 years of age, she's just getting better and better. So I've come here to find out what it is that makes Emily Batty one of cross-country's most competitive racers. Hi, Emily. Hey, you made it, Rob. I've made it. Nice to see you. You all right? Yeah, you You too. I'm good, actually. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen... What are them things? Look at them. So we call these saguaros. Cigaros. Saguaros. Saguaros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at them. Incredible. Yeah, they're pretty sweet, huh? Hello, mate. This is Buddy. Buddy. Oh, come on, bro. Come on. <laughs> Hello, mate. All right? Yeah. How are you? So we're just headed out for a walk. Do you want to join us? Definitely. I have never walked amongst cacti. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do a walk in the cacti. Well, what's that cactus? I've got a small one of them home in the windowsill in the kitchen. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I have, but it's like quite soft. It's crazy here. Look at that hillside there. I don't want to keep on about them. But I've <laughs> never seen anything like it in all my... Look at the size of that one. Go, buddy. So you're from two and a half thousand miles north of here in Ontario, Canada. You've been coming here for over a decade now. What keeps bringing you back? To be on the bike as many hours as we need to be. The consistent weather and the heat is what I find so beneficial. And then that bit of elevation, because we're sleeping at 3,000, but we climb up to 9,000 9, feet as many days of the week as we really want. It's absolutely idyllic. Yeah. And Ontario, did you grow up riding mountain bikes? I mean, did your parents get you into it? Or? Um, so I have two older brothers. Uh, I have a younger sister as well. She now teaches. Um, but for quite a while there, all four of us were racing. And No way. Yeah. We would travel for, you know, six months across Canada, hit all the Canada Cups, and then Norba's on the way back. With the parents? Were they into it? Or? Yeah, all six of us. And we usually had two or three uh, friends hanging out and traveling with us as well. So. No way. 2018, I would say you were at your best ever. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, it, it didn't start well. Um, I think that's why I was so stoked about how we turned it around. I think we had uh, five podiums um, and then the World Championship bronze, so. I mean, what an incredible run. The Brest World Cup Finals last year, without a doubt, the best women's cross country race probably the best cross country race I have ever talked about. It was unbelievable start to finish. And now Langbad goes back to the front. A big day for you as well. Went in fifth, came out third overall in the World Cup. What was that race like for you? It was so dramatic. I think none of us knew whose day it was going to be, actually. Neff desperately trying to get around Emily Batty now. It looked like the race was going to be defined, and then all of a sudden it wasn't. It was as chaotic for us in the race, I think, as it was to watch it. Yeah. And that roaring French crowd. Man, I'll it's never insane. forget that no. feeling. It's unbelievable. We've never seen a race like it. Yolanda Neff is your 2018 UCI World Cup overall winner. Emily Batty has to say best for second again. It's clear that you've got what it takes to beat anyone, but it hasn't happened yet. The World Cup win has eluded you. Is that something you get a bit of a hang up over or? Yeah, I think it's a bit of a blessing in disguise. I, I, I want to see it that way because it's kept me this motivated all these years. You know, seeing those second places, I'm, I am starting to see the shift in myself that kind of like now, well, why not me? Yeah. And when it you know, it becomes a belief from within. Yeah. I think that's when you're going to see the, the Emily Batty 2.0. 2.0, <laughs> yeah, I believe it. Obviously, you can't race at that level without a good team around you. Who's key for you? My heart and soul is my team. Uh, Adam, my husband, he's been my coach um, since back in 2009. 
Um, Adam is a very progressive coach and he never stays in one spot too long. Like we're always coming up with next thing to get over any any lull or any hump. If you stand still, you get left behind. You get left behind. Yeah. And he's a former uh, national team athlete and race world championships as well. So he gets it. Um, he gets the stress of, you know, sponsorship pulls and what travel does to you. And yeah. Yeah, that must be massive for him to understand what you're going through. Yeah. Adam, you're Emily's husband, coach, business manager, training partner, everything. How did you two meet? Yeah, I met through her brother, started road tripping together, going to races, and uh, sooner than later, sparks started flying, and <laughs> <laughs> we, were, uh, we were dating. What is it, do you think, that makes your wife one of the best mountain bikers on planet Earth? Well, I mean, the deets go back to her upbringing, certainly, not specializing in sport too early, not having any other females to compete with and having to chase guys. She's fearless, she's a hard worker, you know, train 800 hours a year and deal with all the media and keep up on the marketing stuff. Like, it's a lot and, yeah. you know, most people that would absolutely crush them. Yeah. Like any athlete, Emily will have bad days, she'll have bad results. How does she deal with those days? How does she come back? She's very strong mentally. London, you know, when she broke her collarbone three days before the Olympics, that one stung for sure. Rio coming fourth, two seconds off a bronze medal, that stung, but you know, she bounced back from it as well. She doesn't dwell on things too much. She moves on and I think it makes her a stronger rider in the end. If there's one thing that motivates Emily, what is it? I think it's the chase, you know, the chase for being the best in the world. Do you think that motivation might diminish if she won everything? It's hard to say. I, I don't think so. I, you know, I think the day that Emily wins is the day that she keeps winning. Well, it's been an absolutely fascinating day. To see the way that Adam and Emily work together, well, it's clear why they're just such a formidable force. And looking around me here, I mean, it's not hard to see why they keep coming back to Tucson. This has to be the perfect winter environment for training. Today has been fun. Tomorrow, I think, could be even more fun, if not a little more physical. I think Emily was quite nice to me yesterday. Today, though, I think she's gonna turn up the ante. She's promised me a bike ride on the infamous Mount Lemon. Before that, though, a strength session at the gym. And while these might be everyday occurrences for her, for me, they're definitely not. Push. Quickie. Ready? Whoa. <laughs> Big pull. Nice. You got this. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Right, push it back now. Good job, mate. <laughs> Thanks for the shakes. You do have the shakes. You got the trembles? I I do not. I think I push myself harder than you. <laughs> Women's cross country, I would say, has never been more competitive. How much of it is psychological, though? I mean, even in the off season, we see you, other riders, posting videos of training and that. Is that like to get an edge? To get in each other's heads? Yeah, to get into each other's heads. Yeah. Is that a part of it? Yeah, I think psychological is coming, you know, a huge role in the, in the performances nowadays um, because the percentages are so small. It's who can uh, show the least cracks yeah. so that even when you are at a weak moment, you don't, you're not perceived as, as weak at all. You know, that psychological warfare is, is that an element nowadays. Does it ever get to you? Do you ever sit and look at videos of, you know, your competitors and go, Looks pretty good there. Does it ever get in your head a bit? Or? Well, I mean, I see like a gym movement or whatever. Like, I'm always like, oh, I could probably do that a little bit better, or a little quicker. Yolanda Neff, world champion, world cup winner in the past, is joining your team. How's that going to change things for you, do you think? Um, I think we're going to be a bit of a powerhouse. I think we're going to use it to our advantage and uh, so come you're, out. You're embracing it. You don't, you think yeah. you're going to clash heads under the awning? No, no, I think, um, I mean, we both have our strengths and um, we both have like big personalities and I think we're going to just feed off each other. It might even make you a better racer then. Yeah, she's great at everything. And so I think yeah. there's a lot to learn from one another. And when we go to that start line, we'll have a pretty, a pretty solid uh, energy. You've made that look easy, Em. 
right. Remember, no rotating in this hip. Yep, got to keep those hips stable. Hips stable. <laughs> Gonna die any second now. Come on, you got 14 left. You know, you've been incredibly successful at World Cups, at World Championships as well. But the Olympics, does that override everything for you? Yeah, yeah. It absolutely. does, that's it, yeah. The, the Olympic Games is the pinnacle in our sport. Yeah. For most sports, but for ours, absolutely. So, you know, after that fourth in Rio, you, you publicly said it was a pretty hard time. Dark days, right? Yeah, coming up that close, it was rough. Um, I think people don't quite comprehend what it takes to go into an Olympic year. It, it's an emotional roller coaster, and when you come up short on the injury in London, um, you just, you feel heartbroken. You went pretty low. 2017, a year after, was it difficult to be on the start line? Were you like that deeply affected by it? Yeah, I definitely had to take a step back. Um, my really? race results fluctuated quite a bit in 2017. But you know, having that support network reminding you that, you know, you do have to come down before you can climb back up. Um, but once you're at the bottom, it's only up from there. The good times outweigh the bad, yeah. ultimately. They always do, they always do. Yeah. We're going riding, aren't we? We are, we're gonna go hit Mount Lemon. It is a climb where we can climb up to 2,000 meters. So. Awesome. Are you game for that? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, can't wait. In a car it'll be fine. Okay, well I'll meet you at the trailhead and then we'll hit the trail and we have about a 45 minute descent. That sounds more like it. All right. Let's go, Em. Well, I would have said that that was enough of a workout for any man or woman in one day, but no. We've only just started. We are now on our way to the infamous Mount Lemon. One of the big reasons that Emily comes down here to Arizona to train it is a 26 mile climb if you want it. I definitely don't. I'm all about the downhill. I'm gonna meet Emily at the top. What time you call this, Emily? Oh. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> I'm only joking. Trust me, I'm really joking. This is probably one of my favorite mountain bike trails. You're really going to enjoy this. Oh, this is sick. <laughs> what a trail. One of the best trails I've ever ridden. You think? It's fun, isn't it? Yes, so much fun. And one last question. Have we seen the best of Emily Batty yet? No, I, I, no. The answer, short answer is hell no, not yet. I look forward to watching it unfold. All right, I'll thanks. race you to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I've really enjoyed today. Thank you very much. But I do get the feeling it's not quite over yet. And judging by that look on your face, I get the feeling I need to be a little bit worried. <laughs> I thought, what could we do that's my normal, but yet a little outside your comfort zone? Oh, great. <laughs> yes. Do you feel good? Relaxed? I feel a bit stressed about wearing just a dressing gown. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Have you got your eyes shut? Of course I do. Yeah, me too. What do you say, Rob? Did we find the edge of your comfort zone? I am bang in the middle of my comfort zone. Yeah. This is fantastic. I thought you would enjoy it. Oh, it's, it's actually far better than I ever imagined. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a bit weird, but no. <laughs> Is there beauty salons in London? Oh, I'm sure. I may go again. Can you see on my left eyebrow that there's quite a bit missing? <laughs> I found the grey hair. <laughs> 
and I couldn't get it with the tweezers, so I used my fingernails and pulled out most of my eyebrow. 